welcome to another episode of Three Minute Histology with Jamie Chapman. Today we're going to be looking at a section of the sublingual salivary gland. That's one of the paired salivary glands associated with the oral cavity. There's three of those. Uh, the other two are the parotid salivary glands and the submandibular salivary glands. And I've already made videos related to those. So check them out on my uh, YouTube channel. Um, here we're going to have a look at the sublingual though. So let's start our three minutes. So like the other paired salivary glands, uh, the sublingual salivary gland is encased within a dense irregular connective tissue capsule. And that capsule throws in some uh, septa, uh, connective tissue septa, which divides the gland into lobules. So here's one lobule here, here's another lobule here, and so on. So any ducts which are draining the secretions of these uh, secretory acini found within these lobules are going to be intralobular ducts, like the intercalated and the striated ducts, which we find within the major salivary glands. Now, the sublingual salivary gland is predominantly mucus secreting. So if we have a look at a little bit uh, higher magnification, we can see all of these mucus acini, very pale staining. And they have the typical sort of uh, mucus acinus type of appearance with uh, basically located flattened nuclei and then most of their cytoplasm actually are relatively unstained. It's sort of this um, uh, glass type appearance. And that's because mucus is a very glycosylated glycoprotein. That means it has lots and lots of sugars attached to its protein backbone. And because of all of those sugars, eosin can't interact very well with that protein backbone. Uh, and therefore, we have this sort of uh, stained glass type of appearance uh, related to their cytoplasms. Now, if there is a serous component associated with these mucus acini, they often appear as these sort of little serous demiloons, little caps of serous cells which sit on the surface. And this is a little bit of artifact. When these cells have been processed, the mucus has sort of expanded and squeezed out the serous cells onto the uh, surface of these mucus acini. So we don't tend not to have serous um, acini in the sublingual salivary gland, if they uh, serous cells exist, they exist as these serous demiloons. You can see some over here and some other ones over here. We can see a duct here. So here's an intralobular duct. There's another little one over here. So they move from a simple cuboidal to a tall a simple cuboidal, and then eventually they uh, may form a striated duct. It's a little bit controversial about whether they, in fact, uh, you can find striated ducts in the sublingual. They're definitely found, of course, within the submandibular and the parotid salivary glands. If we zoom out a little bit, we can see some of the other features here. There's a nice big lobar duct here. Uh, if we have a look at this in a little bit more detail, we can see uh, this uh, stratified uh, cuboidal type of epithelium, a thick epithelium, which is going to be a nice conduit to uh, the, this secretion here. You can see all this mucus secretion uh, within this region. And just out of a little bit of interest here, if we go over um, to the left over here, we can actually see uh, within the connective tissue capsule so a ganglion. Uh, you can actually see uh, these ganglion cells with their satellite cells, um, nice pale, big, round nuclei, typical of a neuron. So that's the three minutes. I hope you found that useful.